Hello and welcome to Naval Horizons. I'm your host, Samina Mondal, a public affairs intern with the United States Naval Research Laboratory. And today I am joined by Ms. Alicia Scott. She is the Chief Engineer of Data Analytics and Artificial Intelligence within the Systems Engineering Division at the Naval Systems Warfare Center, Crane. Thank you so much for joining us, Alicia. No problem. So to start us off, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and specifically your role in the U.S. Navy as a subject matter expert? Sure. Uh, my name is Alicia Scott. I work at NSWC Crane, which is in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. It makes a lot of sense, landlocked Indiana for a naval base. Um, but we do um, different types of research there. Um, and specifically, my area of expertise is data science. So I've helped develop the data science effort at Crane um, through building up the different um, capabilities we have, developing more tools, developing a larger group of people who have the ability to practice and implement data science. Incredible. So what exactly was your academic background? And you, can you kind of walk us through the path that led you to where you are today? Sure. Um, so after high school, I had no idea what job I wanted to do, not a single clue. I knew it want, I wanted STEM. I've always really loved math and logic and thinking through things. So I chose theoretical mathematics as my undergrad because it gave me a lot of options. And I, you know, I was obsessed with calculus. Um, and from theoretical, cal uh, theoretical mathematics and doing lots of calc and statistics, they teach you the logic. You basically are learning why math works the way it works. Um, and proving that math works the way you think it does. So from that, I went into industry for a market research firm doing statistical analysis and data reconfiguration, which is quite a mouthful. Um, it's basically rearranging data so that it makes sense to the average viewer, so that somebody who doesn't understand data natively could be able to speak about what that data source is saying. Um, from there, I was ready for a growth opportunity, um, and I, my company didn't have that option for me. And so I started looking around and at that time, Crane, um, recruited me and asked me to come be a subject matter expert at base in Indiana. So I moved from Cincinnati to Indiana to start working there, um, and then built up a data science team with the help of my leadership and um, from the ground up. Um, and I have developed it to quite a few people working with me on data science as a practice. Uh, my master's is in, um, from Berkeley, the MIDS program for information and data science. Wonderful. So you did mention data analytics, data science, and artificial intelligence, which are such hot buzzwords these days. Could you provide us with a little bit of a description of each and what they represent in terms of your job? Sure. Um, so data science is like a three part of three other career fields. So it's artificial intelligence, computer programming, and data analytics. You combine them all together and they're way more supportive of one another and it enables you to do a lot more with that, um, with that knowledge, with that capability. So the computer programming piece is like your scripting, making, um, automating things, or getting a program to do um, a task for you. Um, artificial intelligence, a huge buzzword. Um, <laughs> I, I specifically practice um, artificial intelligence, obviously, in conjunction with data science. So AI is not our end all be all in data science. It's not going to fix everything and make everything better, but it does help a lot. AI really fills in the gaps where um, it's very repetitive tasking it's really good at. It's really good at taking a task you teach it and then redoing it for you over and over and over. So I like to kind of use the tagline that we want AI to do the things that are repetitive and we want humans to do the things that take a logical human brain to do. Um, and then data analytics is um, comparing one data point to another point and seeing if it's significant. Um, and then you can expand on that to a larger variety or keep it really small. Awesome. It's very interesting to see how they all kind of come together. So I understand that you also serve as the deputy data pillar lead for the project Overmatch, as well as the crane strategic lead for the trusted AI program. So that's so many different elements of you using data analytics and artificial intelligence. So could you explain one element of your job that you enjoy the most? Oh, goodness. Um... Put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um... 
I think I like the, some people quote it as evangelizing data science. I don't know if that's the right term for it, <laughs> but I like taking data science into areas that maybe aren't using it and showing them how much of an impact it could mean make with very small, minute instances of adding data science into their practices. So with my chief engineer job, that's doing that for different programs that we have in the Navy, bringing it in that people who are maybe working um, with data like they used to 15 years ago and bringing that a little further forward with trusted AI that's implementing, uh, that's a research project that's helping universities and the government come together to enable better artificial intelligence. So that's spreading the word there. And then Project Overmatch is um, a huge effort coming forward with um, data in the Navy and how we use that. Wonderful. So as you're leading these projects in relation to AI and data science, how do you see it directly making an impact on the Department of the Navy or simply just naval challenges? So I think one of the hugest benefits that the Navy has is they have a depth of data unlike any other group that I've ever seen. The Navy's data goes back a long time because we've been around a really long time. Um, whereas maybe your newer companies, they have data that is built to be analyzed by AI, AI. It's built to be automated. It's built very specifically. The Navy doesn't necessarily have that. Um, and by implementing data science techniques, targeted at Navy data, we're able to start to bridge that gap to take us from um, a, a different type of practice to more new age and bridge that between industry and the Naval piece. Wonderful. So are there any specifics that you see within your department or maybe even artificial intelligence and data science respectively that are going to create multiple amazing solutions in the near future or far future for the Navy? So, I mean, some simple things like um, we, my team and I wrote um, an algorithm that reads a maintenance report. Maintenance reports are all over the Navy. Um, we use them constantly, um, but they are mostly words. It's mostly like a large text. Somebody's gone in there and typed out a story of what happened and why it happened. And prior to this, our engineers were having to read those every single one of them by hand and make notes about them, which is a bit exhausting. Um, so we wrote a natural language processing script, which is an AI technique to make a computer read text, read text. Um, and we're able to write this algorithm targeted at maintenance data so that um, an engineer no longer had to read those. The algorithm output exactly what the engineer had been pulling out of those texts. So it went from taking one engineer two months of reading these reports to running in about a minute and doing that, having that kind of time gap is huge. So then that engineer isn't spending time reading reports anymore. They're actually getting to do a fun part of their job. So you can't escape writing, it seems, <laughs> no matter even if you're in STEM. It's wonderful. So in what ways do you see naval sciences having an impact on our nation or specifically the defense tactics that we use? Uh, data science has a wealth of potential for that. I love to see that the Navy is really stepping up in the data science realm. Um, they're really advocating in that area and seeking out people who want to work in data science. Using data, we can use infinite past work to show us what to do in the future. You can take that to make inferences and data-led decisions that can change the way we work, whether that's in a government sense um, for policy or whether that's in like a battle or whether that's in how we just run our operations on each base. So there's so many room, there's so much room for improvement. There's so many places where you can implement what seems like a simple solution to you and you can save a person four to six hours a week, which again, seems small, but you do that over and over and you're really improving the lives of everyday people who are working to further the mission of our warfighter and to bring, um, bring a better standard of work to those people. Could you provide us with a bit of advice that perhaps you would give your younger self or someone in high school or college that wants to take part in STEM exploration, specifically through the Navy? Um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. <laughs> um, but there are a ton of different programs for high school or collegiate um, students to implement in the Navy. There are 
smart scholarships. There are, I mean, I'm sure you can list an infinite number of programs where you could implement as an intern and you learn different pieces. Then you're able to try and test things out. I think that's for me. Like I said, I didn't know what I wanted to do out of high school beyond STEM. So being able to try different fields out on my own helped me to really understand that data science was what I was passionate about and excited for. So don't be afraid to test a few different things out. And the Navy's going to give you infinite opportunities to do that if you're interested. It's amazing. So have you within your career been able to get that support from the Navy as you pursue your master's degree and so on and so forth? Um, so I chose to do my master's degree on my own time because I wanted, I, I chose I chose Berkeley, which is a really difficult program and it takes a ton of time, um, but there are options where the Navy helps pay for a master's degree or you can pursue higher education while the Navy is giving you a salary. I specifically really like I uh, was really invested in the work I was doing at the moment, so I didn't want to take a break. Um, so mm -hmm. I've been managing the two at the same time. So Alicia, we understand that data science and artificial intelligence is a part of the Navy and specific Naval STEM, but are there any modern day or contemporary examples on how the two work together? So I use data science in my work constantly, obviously that's my passion, but I think people underestimate how often data science is implemented in their everyday lives. So from, I mean, you see the tick, or you see the example of Tesla all the time as being the AI thing, but also TikTok. TikTok is really focused on understanding what the user wants and what the user wants to see more of and will spend more time in the app. That's all data science. Instagram does the same thing. You know, those social media sites are tracking data, learning, getting better, getting more into your preferences. Um, we see data science and at fast food restaurants, they're using it to say, what's going to be the best price that I can do for the menu item? Data science is in most facets of our everyday lives, but it's under the surface, so we don't necessarily notice it. Wow. The, the more we know, the more we can realize that each and every way there's almost data science and AI as we turn the corner. So great to have that insight. On another note, what has been your favorite aspect of your job or maybe a favorite memory that you have while in your position? I think it's working, working with people. It's working with people who are working really hard to make our world a better place or to do their job really excellently. It's getting to hear how they experience data, how they experience the work they're doing and to make that better and easier for them. Um, having that connection to something that's really meaningful is something I did not get in my industry job. Um, my industry job felt more like a, you do task A, you do task B, nobody in the company is going to notice otherwise, unless you don't get those two tasks done. <laughs> Whereas at the Navy, I feel like I'm making a difference. I feel like I am helping people, whether that's that's my financial analyst down the cube row from me, or whether that's somebody who is working on a ship um, to do their job there. I get to feel like I'm really making a difference in small ways that add up over time. It's lovely. It's great to see how within the Navy, teamwork and collaborative efforts are not only at the forefront, but enjoyed by so many of its civilians. Well, thank you so much, Alicia, for a great conversation today. It's so clear that your passion and also your expertise is something that you value and really are contributing to the future of the Navy and STEM workforce in general. So thank you for joining us. Well, thank you all at home as well. Be sure to check out the future and past Naval Horizons episodes. And until next time, I'm Samina Mondal, and I'll catch you then. <laughs>